Welcome to CBS Sports NBA insider Bill Ryder and former NBA coach of the year Avery Johnson as a player helped the Spurs win the championship in 1999. Join us from San Francisco. Celtics went on a 17-0 run in the fourth quarter of game one while the Warriors went on a five-minute scoring drought and that was the difference. Avery, you and the Spurs won the first two games of the 1999 NBA Finals en route to a title. What's the significance of a game one road win for Boston? It's very significant, especially when you're talking about a team that really doesn't have any NBA Finals experience. And we talked about the experience of the Golden State Warriors. So when the Boston Celtics can come in and steal game one, especially on a night when Jason Tatum struggles from the field, uh, he was basically a, a chef at a restaurant. He was serving up uh, lots of different meals and with his assists. Uh, so if you'd have told us that Jason Tatum would struggle as much as he did from the field, uh, you would probably think it would lead to a loss for the Celtics. But they were they, those guys played extremely well, especially in the fourth quarter. And and it just set the tone uh, for the rest of uh, for the rest of that game in a, such a strong finish. So I think it was significant. I and mean, that's exactly right. A, a source had told me we were walking into the arena that I was able to track down that he'd been around both those teams pregame and that the Warriors were loose and confident, maybe coach a little cocky, yeah. and it felt like Boston was tight. And you saw Jason Tatum come out, shoot that air ball. They looked a little off kilter. And the ability to stay in that game with that step first quarter to withstand what was an incredibly impressive Warriors first really three quarters and then win, it reinforces, I think, everything that Ime Odoka has been preaching, the run they've been on since January. And you said it, it just infuses, if you're the Boston Celtics, that team with the confidence offensively, even without Tatum, and defensively, even going up against Steph Curry. Not only do they belong, I'm sure they believe going forward, if they didn't beforehand, they're the best team in this finals. And give it up for the old guy, right? Al Horford turning 36 years old on Friday, made his NBA Finals debut on the eve of his birthday. Had himself a night making six three-pointers, most in a finals debut in NBA history. Avery, what's your approach in defending Horford in game two? Are you giving him open looks and challenging him to beat you again? No, I'm not giving him any open looks or, or the others on the team. I think if you're going to allow the Boston Celtics not only to make 21 threes on the road, that's a recipe for for success for the Celtics and failure for the Golden State Warriors. And it's not just the makes, it's the attempts. You don't want Boston to attempt 40 or more threes uh, because if you do, especially with wide open looks, I know there was a big point of emphasis in double teaming and triple teaming Jason Tatum, but uh, you don't want uh, the go the Boston Celtics to rinse and repeat this same formula by giving Al Horford, a guy that's in the latter part of his career, uh, these type of looks. And, and remember, Al Horford had this same type of performance against Giannis Antetokounmpo in the series with the Milwaukee Bucks. So he's not new to this, uh, but he's true to this, and you don't want to continue to give a, an old guy uh, confidence uh, as this series move on. You know, that, that, that's it. He's been so legit and so dangerous. My kids on Paramount Plus, we have it, of course, uh, watch the Mission Impossible movies all the time. And one of the plot lines is you, Tom Cruise rips off the mask or rips, and it's somebody else underneath somebody's got to check to make sure it's not an older Michael Jordan out there in an Al Horford mask doing the things that he's doing the way that he's playing you said at the performances even before this series Milwaukee in particular the eight points in that fourth quarter I know you got to worry about Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown and at times Marcus Smart and at times Derek White the list goes on but Horford has shown himself to be ready for this to have spent a career working toward this you you're not going to double him but you got to pay attention to this guy like he's the closer that he has been because he's told you who he is and it's time to listen. Bill, I know you have money on the Warriors to win their fourth title in eight seasons, uh, and I know you didn't like how Steve Kerr coached in game one. What do you want to see different in game two? <laughs> Everything. I'll be fair. I did. I did hedge. I did hedge on a little bit uh, on the Celtics. Was looking for a middle. I'll, I'll take it. He, here's what I. There's a lot that needs to happen. But the primary thing. I love this coming off the conversation about Al Horford and White and some of the contributions we saw. We need to see players not named Stephen Curry contribute in a significant way. It's the NBA Finals. One guy can't do it alone. Ask LeBron James. Ask a, a whole host of players over the years. Jordan Poole. And I know he's a young guy. I know the moment feels big. Got to be better. 
Draymond Green, who's a superstar, but not an offensive superstar. He does so many things that are important. He can't be missing every free throw he takes. He can't be missing every three-point shot he takes. He can't be making 20% of his shots. If he's going to take that many shots, he's got to hit some of those buckets. Andrew Wiggins was good, maybe even great, but they need contributions from a whole host of guys, especially if, and as the Celtics have done this again and again, a bunch of other guys are going to contribute for Boston. The Warriors have to get a similar level of help offensively from guys not named Steph Curry. Well, first, I'll start with the players. Uh, two of the big three, Jordan Poole and Klay Thompson, they have to combine for at least 50 points in game two. You cannot allow Steph Curry to be a one-man band, especially with Draymond Green, who historically hasn't been a very good scorer. They're going to need the, the other two of the big three to step up. And those guys can't have dismal efforts uh, offensively. They got to open up lanes, make some shots. Uh, Jordan Poole can't play like he's in the G League because we have high expectations for him. And then if Steve Kerr is in the same situation, we were teammates on that 99 team that you alluded to with the Spurs. He was an unbelievable teammate. Been, he's been on a historic run as an NBA coach and a champion multiple times there over. I think if he's in this situation again and they're up by double digits going into the fourth quarter and Wiggins and Steph Curry have combined for 50 points, start one of those guys in the beginning of the fourth, that's too much offense, and with Wiggins' defense to be on the bench to start the fourth quarter. So look for Steve Kerr to make some of those necessary adjustments. Yeah, Steve Kerr not good against the Celtics, 7-10 and 10 against the Celtics. Uh, that's the only team that had a losing record uh, over this span uh, in his coaching career. All right, so Avery, your, your former teammate, Steve Kerr, do you expect him to, to lean on Steph a little bit more and expect a minutes increase for Steph in game two? I think it's yes, because they looked a little gassed early in the, in the game for some reason. It looked like those guys needed to go and have a practice and get on the treadmill and build up their intestinal fortitude and, and their stamina. So look for a better effort from them. And if Steph Curry has to play 46 minutes, he'll play 46 minutes. But I think the biggest adjustment is how are they going to guard Jason Tatum? Look for more single coverage or man-to-man -man coverage with no help on Jason Tatum to try to guard the others. Maybe Jason Tatum, you know, he'll score. I got him going over 27 and a half because of the adjustments by the Warriors to shut down guys like White, uh, shut down guys like Harford. Uh, you got to really limit. Marcus Smart even threw in a couple of threes. Pritchard uh, made some threes. So, again, if they can hold – Golden State can hold Boston to about 10 threes or less. Uh, that'll bode well for them in game two, but it all starts with their defense and their approach on Jason Tatum. If I was a Warriors fan, which I'm not, and there's only a couple other teams that I would not want to be a fan of, like the Ravens and the Steelers, um, but if I was or if I were a Warriors fan, one of my biggest concerns would be the fact that the Celtics' best player, as we mentioned, Jason Tatum, was 3 of 17, and they still won game one. Bill, do you believe Boston can do what they did in game one and win three more games against Steph and company? I, I do. I, I really do. Look, I, this felt to me like almost a coin flip 24 hours ago. I thought the Warriors would win. We're certainly not writing them off. But we talked about the fact that we were going to know so much more about this series. And anyway, let's be honest. We are going to know about the Boston Celtics, whether they belonged, whether that defense has been excellent, ex historically great since January, including the postseason, was really going to come and be able to take on the massive pressures of dealing with the Warriors. The answer is yes. The answer you just said, Akeem, can they get buckets when Jason Tatum, enough points, Jason Tatum has an off night. We saw that in other series. They can do it against the Warriors. I think, again, it's a long series. We've seen adjustments. This is a Celtics team, as an example, that lost their opening round game against the Bucs, that lost their opening round game in the conference finals against the Heat. They're obviously here, so you don't write them off. But I think we've switched from Warriors being a favorite, for me a slight favorite, to the Celtics being a slight favorite. And if the Warriors don't win on Sunday, and it, there's a long ways to go, they're a great basketball team, championship pedigree, all that, 
they don't win on, on Sunday, this thing's over, it, or close to over. So, yes, I, I think Boston can win this series. I think they're the slight favorites. But just like 24 hours ago, Akeem, I think it's really close, and I think individual performances and small moments are going to make big differences in which way it goes. I think you look for the Warriors to bounce back, and I agree. If they don't win on Sunday, it's it's over. And, you know, more power to uh, the Boston Celtics going back home. Emil Doka, who doesn't get enough credit, that's his name. Give him more credit. Um, I think he's done a masterful job, especially the way he came back in the Buck series, and then they put away the Miami Heat on the road uh, in Game 7 and basically locked up everybody else not named Jimmy Butler. So, again, I'm giving the Warriors the benefit of the doubt here. Um, they probably watched eight hours of video today. Uh, they'll come back and have a great practice on tomorrow. Maybe because Boston is going to be a little bit intoxicated with success and uh, hopefully uh, Golden State will not be paralyzed by failure, they'll come back, hit the reset button. Draymond Green seems to think so, that they'll be ready to go. So I'm picking the Warriors to come back and win this game too, and I'm still sticking with them, even though reluctantly, uh, in this series. All right, so Avery likes the Warriors rest away. Bill says uh, I'll, I'll ride with the Celtics even there as, they, as they sit as favorites, dollar sixty-five with a game one win as they look for title number 18, which would pass the Lakers for most in NBA history while the Warriors looking for their fourth title in the last eight seasons. Bill, Avery, thanks. We'll see you on Sunday from San Francisco. And uh, game two Sunday back at Chase Center where the Celtics handed the Warriors their first loss at home this postseason. Tip-off set for 8 p.m. Eastern. Warriors looking for a split before heading to Boston for game three on Wednesday. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.